This week marked nine years since the devastating earthquake and tsunami in Japan. The disaster triggered another crisis, a meltdown at the Fukushima nuclear power plant. More than 160,000 people fled the region along Japan's northern coast, and many have never returned. CBS's Rami Innocencio was given rare access to the ghostly restricted area surrounding the Fukushima plant. No, this isn't Fukushima in 2011. This is Japan's radiation-devastated region now. People are allowed to pass through quickly, but still not allowed to live here. The beeping you're hearing is my dosimeter going off. It's telling me we're getting exposed to 10 times the normal amount of radiation. We are in the no-go zone outside the nuclear power plant. People haven't been allowed to live here for the past nine years, and buildings still look like this. In 2011, more than 18,000 people were killed after a tremendous 9.0 earthquake unleashed a towering 50-foot tsunami, triggering meltdowns in three reactors that cut power and water to millions. Maintenance and cleanup continue to this day, with the ruined reactors encased in new containment shields to wall off radiation. Tokyo Electric Power, or TEPCO, which still runs the plant, granted CBS News rare access to show progress being made. We geared up from socks to vests and our own personal radiation counters. We had our baseline radiation levels checked to compare with when we leave, then headed out to the site of the world's worst nuclear catastrophe since Chernobyl. We're about 100 times normal background radiation. TEPCO employees say that this is safe as long as we don't stay here very long. This past week, a new movie about Fukushima was released in time for this anniversary, retelling a disaster that needed little to dramatize further. Robots are only just starting to survey damage done. Lethal radiation is still generated by melted fuel inside, but a technological cleanup is decades away. Another problem is political. Water needed to cool the reactors is building up and space is running out. It's a not-in-my-backyard anxiety. More than 1,000 tanks hold more than 1.2 million tons of tainted water. That can fill nearly 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The most pressing question now is what to do with all of this treated water. TEPCO says the most realistic option is to release all of it into the ocean and that it's safe. Kenji Abe, who toured us around, is Fukushima Daiichi's public relations manager. We're thoroughly inspecting fish and can confirm there's no fishery contamination, he says. And if we precisely follow national regulations on diluting water when disposing of it, there won't be any problems. It'd be perfectly fine to do what we call a controlled, monitored release. American nuclear expert Lake Barrett agrees. He oversaw the U.S.'s Three Mile Island nuclear accident and says Japan's emotions still run high. People are basically healing themselves from the emotion of the accident. Uh, there is distrust. People feel uh, the we call harmful rumors that people might not eat the fish and there would be those concerns. And with Japan hosting the Summer Olympics this year, the torch relay is scheduled to begin in the country just minutes away from the nuclear plant. What do you tell people who are nervous about coming to Japan? Olympic, Paralympic. Fukushima will be in the spotlight, says Abe. We want to welcome visitors with a credo of safety first. We're proceeding step by step toward decommissioning. I want visitors to be assured of our steady, clear progress made so far towards that goal. But that goal will remain elusive for a generation to come. With the burden of this historic cleanup and a trauma of the past, few countries will ever know. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Rami Innocencio, Fukushima, Japan. All that water sitting there. And, and what to do about it. And yeah. what right. do you do with it? Yeah, and this is something that is going to last again. Not, it's not over now. This is years, years. Almost a decade later. Yeah. Yep. yeah.